So here we are back after our inflation episode with the inflation reports for December 2022 for India and the US. We thought we'd just give you a brief update on what's happened and we can break down the numbers a bit for you, show you a few skews here and there. Welcome to the Thought Bistro podcast with Akhil and Vishra as we deep dive into a variety of interesting and thought-provoking topics. Join us as we explore the world of ideas and broaden our collective horizon. This will be more like an exercise follow-up to our last podcast about inflation because you know, we want to know how right or how wrong our assumptions are about things. And other than that, we want to know some basics about what's happening in both the countries. Looking at India, inflation eased to 5.72% in December from 5.88% in November. And it beat forecasts of 5.9%. It was the lowest inflation reading since December 2021. And it was the second month where inflation stayed below the Reserve Bank of India's target of 6%. I think a major thing that has been boosting inflation nowadays has been airplanes because energy was quite high in the middle. Now we have a fall in basic commodities. So there's a 15.1% fall in vegetable prices. Yep. So food inflation is down from 4.67% to 4.19%. Wow. That's interesting. It's slowed, by the way. So we want to clarify, whenever there's a positive number on the inflation, things are still getting more expensive, but they're getting less expensive than they were before. Yeah. It's comparative easing, but that doesn't mean prices are going down. Prices are still going up, but relatively, if the prices were going from $100 to $104.67, they are going up from $100 to $104.19. Also to clarify, these are all monthly numbers. And usually what they tend to do is they tend to get like a monthly percentage of some sorts and they try to analyze it. What that means is, let's say they get a 1% increase in a month. So they just say, oh, there is a 12% inflation because annualized, that will be 12 times that. So that is one of the things to be very cautious about when we read these numbers. Again, take these numbers with a pinch of salt because sometimes these numbers are so over bloated in certain segments of the society that they tend to inflate the final number a lot. Yeah, clothing, footwear and housing are also down. In terms of the prices that rose, in fact, fuel and light in India, energy prices have actually gone up. The inflation has actually gone up to 10.97% versus 10.62% in November. So fuel prices might be further on the rise in India. I feel Indian fuel prices were controlled in the past. So when the world was undergoing an inflation in the fuel prices, India was trying to control it because of our massive population and our dependence on agriculture. So because there is a big reliance of agriculture on things like diesel, on things like kerosene, they needed to control those prices. However, these do dip back into benefits for the transportation sector, where even a general person tends to get these benefits, whether you like it or not. But again, these benefits can be held only for so long. And now suddenly India is back to being more expensive than the Western world when it comes to fuel prices. Absolutely. I mean, the government has to control things somewhere. And finally, I think on India, if we had to say a point, is that the CPI as a whole went down by 0.45%, which was the biggest decline since January 2021. On that note, should we move to the next country? Yeah, so looking at the US, the annual inflation rate for the US was 6.5% in December 2022, which is the lowest since October 2021. Here the markets did forecast this. So that actually came down from last result of 7.1%, again, annualized. So that's kind of nice because, you know, the job market didn't crash like we discussed. Still, the inflation is going down. So maybe the belief system is setting in somewhat. Yeah, here the energy, what you were talking about here, fuel costs, energy costs have gone down to 7.3% from 13.1%. And the price of gasoline itself has dropped by 1.5% following a 10.1% surge in November. That is huge. I think there's another big thing of discussion here. In the US, the the export prices have gone down and the import prices have also, you know, they are underperforming inflation by at least 4%. What that means is that 
US is able to import goods that are lower than its inflation value, which generally tends to add more money into the system, more value into the system per se. Because let's say a cup is supposed to be $4 in my economy and is $1 in China's economy. When I get a cup from China to the US, I am bringing in $4 by spending just $1. So that is adding a lot of value to my country. Apart from that, I think we're just going to look at the CPI broken down in the US. In terms of month by month, if you look at the difference for food, food has gone down by 0.3% month on month. These are not annualized numbers. This is just from November to December. And energy was down 4.5%. Fuel oil, which is all types of oil apart from gasoline, has come down 16.6% month on month. I think as good as that month on month number looks, it was very, very inflated in the middle because of the whole, you know, Russia stopping their fuel supply to the world and then US saying no to taking fuel supply from them and all of that jazz that was happening in the world. Now it's coming back a little bit to normalcy, which is good news for all of us. So speaking of a skew, egg costs jumped 11.1% in December. As there was an outbreak of avian flu, so there was a major shortage of eggs. So imagine even though eggs have gone up by 11.1%, food inflation's actually come down. I think eggs have been such a tossing factor in this one. People are like, oh, I was going to buy a hen like a month ago and my wife said, no, I should have bought the hen. I would have sold so many eggs now and become a billionaire. Nobody's making a billionaire on a $1 egg selling for 1.1. We were discussing more about this last episode where we were telling you that one thing can offset the complete history geography of the number. So housing costs continue to go up in the US. They have risen 7.5%. Rent inflation has climbed up 0.8% in December as compared to November. Medical care is up 4% and new vehicles are up 5.9%. You know, rent is another very interesting part of this economy because when you look at rent, what happens is, let's say you own a house and you live in the house. The US government has a way to estimate the price of that house as well as to determine how much rent you would have paid if you were living in that house as a rentee. And then that amount of rent is actually added back to the GDP to inflate the GDP number, whether you're paying that rent or not. That just sounds like such a Ponzi scheme. It's the assumption that since you are living in it, you are eating up that much value because you're not paying anything for living in it. So it's kind of gimmicky, but it does add a huge chunk to the economy, especially if you look at something like Canada now, where the rents are getting very, very inflated. And because the rents are getting inflated, the rent is becoming more and more a part of their GDP uh, as a fraction. Becoming a larger part of the GDP. I don't know if that is a good thing or a bad thing. It's a thing. And, you know, <laughs> we move on from there. Just a random fact to throw in the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Airfares fell to 3.1%, slightly better than November. So I guess so that's a good thing for people who want to travel over the, I mean, over this period now. Airports have been flooded by and people. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> the supply yeah, but at the same like time... But at the same time, uh, there was a system glitch and there were some 37,000 flights grounded, what, two days back? Oh man, that was very weird because it was just a corrupted file. And because of that corrupted file, there, there's supposed to be a safety check right before flights where the pilot is supposed to get a free-to-go signal from the center. And that free-to-go signal was just not going through. And that's why the flights were just, you know, they were just not flying. 37,000 flights grounded, dude. Can you imagine? Yeah, that is pretty mad. It's been a very chaotic month in the US when it comes to flights from the news at least. All oh. the flights getting cancelled due to the cold wave. The New York airport was a scary place during that cold wave period because Southwestern Airlines just decided that we are not going to fly any more flights from Christmas to New Year's and everything was just jam-packed. People just sleeping at the airport. The images looked scary. If any of you have like physical experience from the airport, please let us know. My sister had an experience, dude. My sister was stranded at the airport. Her United flight had a technical issue and she was on the tarmac for three and a half hours in the aircraft while they tried to fix the issue and then it ticked over midnight and the crew timed out. So they cancelled the flight. She had to spend the night at the airport, take an Air India flight the next morning. So she was at the airport, I think, for 14 hours or something like that. And then she finally got home. So she got home and the first thing she did, she was like, listen, 
stay away from me. I need to shower. That must be a horrifying experience, man. Yeah, I don't think my dad slept in two days. But they are coming back to some of the expectations. Expected inflation in the US is down from 4.4% now to 4%. And the five-year target is again set to 2.9%, which is, you know, it's a real good news for everybody because the most stable inflation that a country can have, the most stable growth it can sustain. Yep, and as we mentioned in our inflation episode, it's not that inflation is bad, but you should have control over the inflation that you're having in the country. This was just a brief follow-up to our last episode and we hope you guys go back and listen to that one in case you're confused as to what we are doing here and why we haven't explained anything from the beginning. So looking forward to see you in our last episode. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Thought Bistro podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation and were able to learn something new. If you liked the episode, please be sure to subscribe to our show and leave a review on your favorite podcast app. You can also follow us on social media. Our Instagram and Twitter handles are available in the show notes. Thanks again for listening and we shall see you in the next one.